What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at some really interesting stuff that's coming soon and of course some new arrivals at Blade HQ. It's been two months since I've done this. I looked back and I thought there's no way. Sure enough, for Blade HQ it's been two months. I have not looked at these pages yet other than just glancing at new arrivals throughout the week. So I don't know what I'm going to find but uh, if you'd like to uh, share in this experience and listen to my uh, commentary on it, then uh, by all means, hang out. If you don't want to, that's fine. I will link these pages right down below the video so that you can take a look at the pages yourself. Thanks so much to my uh, patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Here is the Kershaw live wire that is coming. I have this. I have reviewed it. You have not seen the review yet, but uh, spoiler alert, this thing is awesome. There are some people that are not able to get around the idea of a $240 knife from Kershaw, but let's focus on the facts here. Uh, we are looking at premium materials, CPM 20 CV, and the same grade of aluminum that uh, the big boys, you know, what people refer to as the big boys use. Um, but more importantly, the build quality of this and where it is made, right, which is USA, uh, are on point. That's weird to say. The build quality is on point, and it's made in the USA, right? It's not like it's like like <laughs> it's made in the USA, right? So it costs a lot of money, period, right? But the execution of materials here is very, very good, and the price is extremely competitive. This thing is stacking up against the Axial Shift and is actually a better price than the Guardian Tactical Recon 35 and the legendary Microtech Ultratech. Quite a bit better than the Ultratech. Uh, a lot of people seem to be confused by MSRP. Uh, this thing's going to come in at $239. A lot of people saying $300 or $380 or whatever, MSRP. The the price that this is going to come in at is $239. This thing is fantastic. Don't sleep on it. It's a good-looking knife. Um, Kershaw did a great job with the grind. They did a great job with the overall fit and finish. It is excellent. Speaking of excellent knives, the Kershaw Launch 15 in MagnaCut. Uh, right after I did the unboxing, I went to look at the price, uh, and I was like, 150. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, this thing is really cool. Eight and a quarter inches, MagnaCut. Uh, not my, my favorite, like the Micardon. I'm hoping they do different versions with different. It'd be cool to see like a stonewashed or a satin finished blade with a carbon fiber inlay, or maybe just uh, throw some aluminum in there that's a different color, some red, some blue, something like that. But as it sits, I mean, if you like how this looks, 150 bucks USA side opening automatic knife and magna cut. This is excellent. Kershaw is clearly getting better with quality control and execution. The last few knives that I've handled, I mean like the last six or seven knives that I've shown on the channel have all been fantastic, so that's nice to see. Obviously, we have the Spyderco Military 2 coming with the compression lock. Why they chose S30V and not S35VN is, I haven't the foggiest, but okay. I'm surprised. It's as, as I've said and many other people have said, uh, I have no idea why we this wasn't a thing 10 years ago, but it's, it's new now, so there you go. Oh boy, here's this thing. People have, you know, <clears throat> a lot to say about this. A $522 titanium bench made, how dare they, right? It's thin and it's bench made, so it should cost the same as the Griptilian, right? I know. Oh, you're being unfair, Complex. We don't mean it should cost the same as a Griptilian. We just want it to cost a lot less because because reasons. The price is definitely high. I'll, I'll give you that. Price is high. Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't necessarily agree with the price, but you know we got some we got some loony goonies out there yelling that this should be a two hundred dollar knife, and I'm eh, just imagine uh, you know somebody coming in with a broom and just. Let me get these goofballs out of the way so we can have a real serious discussion here. Um, that's kind of the way that I think of it. Um, this is expensive. I'm not going to judge it until I've actually um, handled it. But does it have... See, this says axis, axis lock. Does this have the coil spring system? I should watch a video on it, maybe. Inst before comment... Before just Let me know. Does it have omega springs or does it have a coil spring? Because I'm going to be way more interested if it has the same setup as the legendary Anthem, which Benchmade should never have gotten rid of, right? Everybody was so mad about the Anthem back then. And now it's like, holy crap, a USA-made integral CPM 20 CV, titanium, and a coil spring. People will be beating down doors for that thing now. Uh, 
Or maybe not. I don't know. I mean, you know, think whatever you want. Bench me, bug out, and crater blue. Okay. I like this. That's a good looking bailout. Expensive, sure, but look at that color combination. Man, CPM M4 with the flat dark earth and the blue aluminum. Very cool. Oh, that is a good looking knife. I love the bailout. It feels so much more solid for sure. It's the rat in S35VN for $99.95. Are they still made in Taiwan? Surely. Where is the thing that says where it's made? Surely that's still made in Taiwan, right? I don't think that's bad. Um, I wish that they had done... Oh, it is G10. They did do G10. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm into that. Um, that's cool. That's the big one. In red. Ooh, I might have to get me one of those. Oh, this big guy. I have money down on this one. I saw that the pre-order opened and I immediately, immediately put money down on it. I am not a fixed blade guy. And I can tell you the only thing that I wish was a little bit different with this is that I, I wish it came in black G10, right? But that's a color preference. Man, this is a good looking knife. Such a good looking knife. I have not bought a ZT for so long. And I saw this, I looked at that price and I thought, I can do that. I could do that. Let's let's do it. It's it's a lot of money for a fixed blade. It is, absolutely. But I just spent way more make, having a custom fixed blade made. Um, so I, I really want this to be good. It looks awesome. It's such an, I love the straight handle, flat cap look. I love the, the, the guard on it. I think that looks great. And the blade shape is just, oh, whoever designed this, thank you for not doing some freaking weirdo wackadoodle ding dong stuff with it. You just were like knife, <laughs> just knife. It looks good. I like this. I am so happy with the, the look of this. And you can see the tan goes all the way down the spine of the handle. This looks legitimately heavy duty. And they chose 3V for the uh, blade. I think also that's a, come on. There we go. I think that that is um, 155 thousandths on the spine of the blade. Does it say? It's the 0006, by the way. I'm going to guess it's, um, or maybe it's thicker. No, not 150. I'm sorry. I'm going to guess it's 185 thousandths. Um, that would be my guess, which I, that's about where I'd want that to be. So, yeah. All right. We got some different things here. The Ontario Epoch frame lock. Hmm. What's the steel? A D2. Okay. Not bad. Where's it made? Do we know? It's made in China. Okay, thirty-three ninety-five. Interesting. Just kind of a weird, uh, kind of a weird blade shape. Um, is that the little freak? That's interesting. They're doing the shootout in different colors. This is a nice OTF. It's just so lightweight with that. Um, you know the super the the CF Elite, right? Which is like plastic mixed with it's like a plastic and carbon fiber Damascus. <laughs> not really. That's not an accurate way to describe that. That's a that's a a goofball way to describe that. Mini Adamus in carbon fiber. Is this a satin one? I bet this is going to look good. Yeah, it's going to be freaking expensive, but this is, they're doing this for the collectors, right? Crew wear looks like a stonewashed finished crew wear with, hold on, carbon fiber scales, flat dirt, FD, uh, flat dirt, <laughs> flat dark earth steel liners. Okay, a lot of money, right? The Mini Indomus is cool, and that is a nice color combination. Uh, a bronze or a flat dark earth contrasting with carbon fiber is very nice. That is very, very nice. Obviously, waiting on the immunity. I think a lot of people are waiting on the immunity, right? I don't know if I want to keep talking about that. I, it, it looks really cool. I can't wait to handle it. Benchmade just reached out to me and said, hey, we're, it's about time uh, for us to send you some new stuff. So I didn't ask. I just said yes. Uh, please, I would very much like uh, to uh, to look at some Benchmade stuff. So yeah, this is uh, interesting. The Voker Oval Moon. Maybe one day I'll get around to reviewing some Vokers. We get an orange tagged out, tagged out, tagged out with uh, carbon fiber. Okay, a lot of Benchmades coming in. Lots and lots and lots of Benchmades. Is this another got another OTF here? 
I got to say right off the bat, I'm not, this is a little tiny guy. Number one, I don't like little tiny OTFs. Number two, I don't know if I'm okay with that. In fact, I know for sure I'm not okay with that, that range of HRC for S30V. And mostly, right off the bat, I don't like the skinny little blades coming out of the handles. Can you imagine how skinny and little that blade is? I don't know if that's for me. Maybe it's for you. Carbon fiber mini Osborne. Okay, cool. What else we got? The new Gavco. It's right away. I was like, that's Gavco. Benchmade mini barrage. I think a lot of this stuff has been coming soon for a bit, right? Um, you can get in and pre-order things and you can do the email me when available kind of thing. I'm going to do a one more page. I want to go to new arrivals um, real quick. It's kind of a cool looking fighting dagger there. I get the, the mini or the partial immunity. That's clever. Wee's got a new um, button lock coming out. Snex Vision R is coming back. Yep. It's a nice looking version of it. Nice looking for sure. The Vision R is amazing. It's one of the most interesting Wii's to come out in a long time. If you can get your hands on it, definitely do. All right. Is that it? Unless they have something super duper spectacular on this next page, I think I'll be able to move along. Mareta, we got a boker, we got a boker, we got a dagger. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at some new arrivals. New arrivals. We have the Pilar 3. I think there's a Pilar 4 now. Um, I saw it the other day on a different retailer. Uh, CRKT's got some new stuff. I think they're, I like that they list some knives that are coming soon on their new arrivals page just to let people know like, hey, we actually have a listing for this. Um, not necessarily interested in that. I just want to comment on that. Sencut, uh, Kirill, that's a good uh, starter knife, I think, for a lot of people. This, uh, they got a whole bunch of these S35VN. This is the in-between that people have been asking for, Right. I understand no matter what people, even if this thing was 150 bucks, you'd still have that guy going, that's too much money. You, they could put, they could make this, for, they, they could put a $50 price tag on this. They're not going to, that's, uh, that's unrealistic. But even if this thing was $50, you'd still have at least one ding dong goofball yelling that the price is too high, right? So in my opinion, obviously the base version of this, which was um, Austin A. Originally I defended it, but the more I learned about Austin A, I was like, eh, I, yeah. Then they did the titanium and three V ones and they charged 300 bucks for the bit. I thought that was really cool, but obviously there's not, not everybody's like ready to pay $300 for that. Uh, don't need titanium maybe. And three V might not be the optimal steel for them. Stainless S 35 VN version, 250 bucks is still, you got to grit your teeth through it. Right. But you're getting one of the best EDC knives in the market, for sure. Made in Taiwan, right there, Taiwan, S35VN, so you have a stainless composition, lightweight, compact, magnificently easy to manipulate, uh, ambidextrous, um, and it has the, uh, the shark lock, which is on par with the triad lock. And I always have to say this because there's people who don't know who will aggressively and blindly defend the triad lock. Andrew Demko invented the triad lock, the scorpion lock, and the shark lock. He designed them all to be incredibly durable, right? So you can put your pitchforks and your torches down, right? You can mop up all of your tears and everything. Relax. It is on par with the triad lock. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking. I mean, kind of. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, I like the shark's foot blade the best for EDC, but the drop point blade is great too. We've got a few different colors. I imagine we'll see some more on the next page. Yeah, there you go. You can get in carbon fiber for $15 more. I would honestly opt for the textured G10. I think that's the way to go. Ooh. Um, is the Phoenix a new... I've wanted to buy one. I've, I've, I've been waiting for an excuse to buy one of these. I just wish that they would do something else. I love S35VN, but I mean, you know, every other knife that I own is in S35VN, right? This knife is going to appeal to collectors. <laughs> it just is, period. It's going to appeal to collectors, right? So if you're looking at this, you probably own multiple knives. And if you own multiple knives, you probably own multiple knives in S35VN. It's just, you know... Statistically, that's the way that it's going to work. It does look cool, though. What size? It's four inches. Ballast songs. I still really want to review one of these. The Paragon Estiletto. 
That is a gigantic single action OTF. I really want to review one of those. If anybody's got one they want to loan to me, I promise you'll get it back. I bring it up every time. There must just be like seven people on earth that own that knife. It just looks interesting. I iconic? Is that how they want us to say that? Iconic aperture. Oh, ah, man, I don't know that that's the right combination of letters for memory. Um, what is the deal with these? <laughs> What's the idea here? Put the USA flag on it, and then they'll think that it's, it even says USA. Where is it made? China. Uh uh dude. Uh uh bro. See that? USA flag right there on the handle. And if you look closely, it says USA right under you. I mean, that's just, that's all the evidence we need right there. Okay? That's made in the USA. You got that $200 knife in your pocket? You've been ripped off, pal. Look at this. American flag right there. Utica. <laughs> it's made in China. <laughs> you got to look, you got to look for that stuff. Oh, I forgot to do the, we got we to gotta check reviews. That's always fun. Reading people's reviews on this stuff is always a good time. Um, let's keep going here. Or does ben, does does uh, does Blade HQ still allow people to leave reviews on this on this stuff? I'm I mean I think it's good. It is good to get feedback. What I don't like is when they allow people to review it who haven't bought it, right? It's like, hey, are you scrolling through the website? Tell us what you think about this based on this image, right? That's a dumb, that's a bad thing to do. Nothing interesting on that page to me. Maybe there's something interesting to you. These are kind of neat. Whoa, 200 bucks. Let's find out about this guy. S35 VN, nearly eight inches. I was really hoping that was way longer. Were you with me? I was hoping that was like 10 inches long. Taiwan. I don't know anything about that company. Could be good, could be not good. I have no idea, All right? I'm like, I can't, I can't believe they allow people to leave reviews on this stuff based on looking at it. And then I, here I am, <laughs> literally scrolling to the website like, hey, join me for my, you know, just quick take review based on how this thing looks. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. That MC is a special guy. Do we still, do we not have reviews? We got, we got some reviews here. We got reviews. Let's read the, let's read the review on um, the CA legal, right? We got five reviews averaging out to, um, to uh, uh, four stars. Okay, here we go. Maybe this is a good one. The action on this little guy is genuinely addicting and it's uh, small size is fantastic for EDC and not scaring non-knife people. I agree with that. The fit and finish is essentially perfect. However, the factory edge of the knife came uh, was incredibly uneven. Uh, this is this can be a fair take, actually. I've experienced this before. The actual dips in the secondary cutting bevel. TLDR, it's a great piece with a seriously less than great factory edge. It's a fair review. That's something that this guy obviously bought it and he had a critique about the factory edge. You're paying that much money, right? We gotta have an even factory edge. Fair critique, okay? We got a rare, reasonable. <laughs> that guy should be a knife reviewer. We got a <laughs> we got a rare, reasonable review. Ooh, there it is. My favorite ProTech ever sitting in stock. Buy this knife. I do not say that very often because I don't like to be like, oh, you run out and buy it or meet. I'll try to be real careful about things that I suggest without giving a lot of context. If you want my thoughts on this knife, I have reviewed it. It is absolutely my favorite ProTech ever. It is based on the Les George Rockeye, which you're probably more familiar with it as the VECP, which is the production or mid-tech version of the Rockeye. This is an automatic version of it. I have a friend who bought my old Rockeye from me and beat it into the earth. It is beat to crap and still works Perfectly. I resharpen it for him periodically. The aluminum has just been, I mean, it looks like he just wakes up, grabs it off of his dresser, and hucks it out into the street every day. That's what it looks like. But the thing is going strong. CBMS 35VN, 8.375 inches, uh, full size, very powerful. 
This is, if, you, if you're like, which ProTech? I don't know. That one right there. That's the way to go if it's legal. Also, the Vision R's. No, that's pre-order. That says pre-order. Okay. Um, let's see here. Hmm, hmm. What do we have that looks interesting? That's the Burnley Squid 2. The one that I had, I could not get it to center. Outside of that, it was okay. The Titanium Luft Concepts Avant looks cool. I th Pretty high price tag. I wonder who makes that. Why doesn't it say where it's made? I mean, I think, I, I know, but anyways. Hmm, CRKT, they've got their own bar lock now. That's kind of interesting. Uh, oh, these are expensive boys. Hmm, we have, a, we have one review on this guy and it's a five-star review. Can we read it? Where is it? Where's the review? It... <laughs> <laughs> CRKT. <laughs> this is a pretty sweet knife. So, yeah. <laughs> Come on. You got to give us more information. This is this is as bad as seeing a one-star review that has no information. Uh, he just wrote CRKT. But this, this is the actual person here. That's funny. Okay. Pretty sweet knife, apparently. Um, I mean, I believe that it, it probably is. I just want to know more, you know, from somebody who's actually experienced it uh crap load of microtex we're seeing those all over the place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. man i want somebody to make a good one of these but i just don't trust them you know at least not the ones that are not you know like uh, there's a company it's like the a oh i care it's like the four or five hundred dollar ones that you never see right oh Congrats to whoever picked that up. That's freaking cool. Super expensive. I'm going to save. I'm going to hold out for the manual version. I got to handle one of these in person because we have a local dealer who is now carrying Microtech and this knife exactly. I wasn't ready to pump out 500 bucks for it, but it was very impressive. Hey, there's the Esprit. Uh, looks like it's back in. So if you've been waiting on the Esprit, that is a good knife to buy from we for that amount of money. If you want the budget version of it, go with the Sokoki, Sokoke, Sokoke, uh, which people are telling me is some sort of exotic cat, whatever. Uh, this is a wonderful knife. I just reviewed it. If you want to hear my review, go ahead. Um, but holy crap, it's excellent. Seriously, uh, that's a wonderful knife for 62 bucks. A few different versions too. Moving on, song, new Paragon Warlock X. What's the X mean? I don't know. I have this knife here too. The Renegade Provisions GOM. It's pretty good. I like it. Oh, I'm tempted by that one. It has a, even has a Phoenix on it. That's that's one that's made for me. All stonewashed. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. That's nice looking. I like that. Kind of like the... I don't know. I don't know if I like this or if I like the symmetrical look of the Warlock better. I wish they'd come out with more Titanium Warlocks. The day that I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm going to buy it. I know exactly which one I want to because it's been on Blade HQ for months, all stonewashed. I was like, nah, it's still there. And I go, and of course, it's sold out. So poop. Original Goat, uh, Spider Copera 3 scales. Are these, these are surely in aluminum. Yeah. It's cool, though. I like the pineapple texture. It looks nice. I've heard everybody always talks about how much they love those. So if you've been looking for um, replacement skills for Spider Co. or... Uh, a Demco 8020.5. People really like those. So, um, what is this? Matsy Basilisk. That looks kind of neat. It looks like it's small. Looks like it's a small boy. Yeah, 7.1 inches. It's. I'm sure it's fine. I just. I look at that and I think I want that, but I want it to be bigger. Right. I like the look of it. It's just a preference thing. It's not the knife. It's not the small knives are bad. Right. Um, Italian style. Yeah. I see. I want. I want somebody to make a good, high quality, dependable swing guard. They all just seem to be very delicate, unless you are willing to spend five or six hundred dollars. In which case, even those are are not like you know. I think even they even say like, eh, maybe don't EDC this every day, right? So, are we getting into the 
this this is hardly new arrivals anymore. We are now 14 pages in. I think we must be getting back into a lot of the stuff that I've already seen. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the knife world. Oh, they have a President's Day uh, sale through going on through the weekend. I probably should have pointed that out first. <laughs> Check out the President's Day sale. I think they did. I found an AD15, Cold Steel AD15, uh, an S35EN and G10 for like 150 bucks um, through one of their sales here recently. I think I posted on the community tab. But if you didn't know, they have a sale going on. So there you go. Uh, like I said, these pages, both new arrivals and um, coming soon, will be linked down in the description so that you guys can check this stuff out for yourself. I hope you all enjoyed Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.